you want to know how to clean your model kit pieces and why you should do it. So let me just make it short and sweet. First thing you're going to need your plastic injection molded model pieces. Second, you're going to need hot water, either in a little basin, inside of a sink, inside of a bathtub, whatever's most convenient for you and available to you. Third, you're going to need some dish soap, really, really affordable. You don't need to get anything fancy, literally just regular old dish soap. And for my method, I like to use a toothbrush. All you're going to do is run your model pieces underneath the hot water in the sink. You are going to fill the sink full of hot water and put your dish soap inside the hot water. Once your pieces have been soaking for 20 to 30 minutes or whatever you feel is sufficient enough, you're just going to take a toothbrush and clean all the pieces until all the dirt, debris, mold release is gone. After you are sure that it is done, you are going to run it under fresh hot water and then you can either let it air dry or towel dry it. Why are you wanting to do this? I will let you know. If you are wanting to paint your Gunpla or your airplane or your car or whatever, you are going to want to clean off your pieces. The process that these pieces go through in the factory, injection molded and everything like that, it is going to create a mold release and debris and just a whole bunch of gunk that is going to mess up a primer or a paint job or anything that's gonna go on your kit. And that, my friend, is why you wanna clean your parts. And that is how I clean my pieces. If you wanna know a little bit more about my process and why, stay tuned. Otherwise, I hope your paint project goes really well and I will see you guys possibly in the future. Bye! What is up guys? Welcome back to Hobby Bolt. My name is Skylar and today is Mobile Suit Mist Day 16. I had to think about it. I'm at the point where I have to think about it. I was scrolling through my old content and I realized that I was doing our community a great disservice because I am one of the very few videos about why and how to clean your Gundam pieces. Now, it was met with a, a decent chunk of scrutiny. Uh, I went to the Reddit thread and uh, I was getting roasted because I choose to clean my pieces on the runners. But let me explain a little bit more about why I do that. So the process, very straightforward. As you can see at the very beginning of the video, I said it really, really quickly. You wanna clean your pieces because, let me just show you Bandai's process for how they make these plastic injection molded pieces. Look at this right here. As you can see, they go through a heavy machine the material that is used to actually create the plastic sits inside of big burlap bags and then it goes through all these tubes and debris and just goes through an entire factory. If you guys have any experience inside of factories or machine shops, they are not the cleanest place and what ends up happening is they inherently are just going to get a whole bunch of mess on the actual pieces. Why is this important? What will happen if they're not appropriately cleaned is they will react with the mold release, they will react with the dirt, and they will make your primer bubble and it will not give you as smooth a paint job as if you would have cleaned the pieces. Now, as I was saying, I face a bunch of scrutiny about why I actually clean the pieces on the runners. Now, I clean them on the runners because my process involves several times of cleaning it. I think it's much easier to clean the bulk of all the mold release, the junk and everything like that on the runner rather than running the risk of losing a piece down the drain, losing a piece just anywhere, losing a piece of the water, not remembering where it is. I think it makes more sense to clean your pieces inside your sink, inside your basin, inside your bath and get the majority of it off. It, I just, it just makes sense to me. I will put the footage here of the last time that I did this for my Exia project and I ran into dead bugs, debris, all kinds of gunk and I was able to get that off by keeping it on the runner. If you actually have a piece after you're done cutting it off and you're modifying it and you're about ready to paint it, it's gonna be so much harder to hold that little piece and make sure that you appropriately clean it enough that it will not react with your paint or your or your primer. Now, the other question that I got is, can you use white vinegar? Can you use purple power? What kind of dish soap do I use? Literally, this is just good old cheapo dishwashing soap from Walmart. I think it's like a couple of cents. It's literally not even that much. You can use whatever you want, but I will say, um, if you're gonna use white vinegar, white vinegar is very drying on the hand, so just make sure you cut it down and make sure you wear gloves or you're careful with it and then moisturize afterward. If it's available to you and it's easier than getting dish soap, definitely use it. It works just the same as long as you scrub it good enough. 
and let it sit. Now the other method is purple power and simple green. And I will say about those, if you are going to do that, you need to cut them down because they are very, very harsh chemicals and they can break pieces if they stay in too long. So if you are gonna use it, yes, great. I only use those for when I'm trying to take paint off of a piece and you don't leave it on for very long because like I said, it will make the plastic brittle and it will break. If you wanna clean your pieces that way, you are more than welcome to. It may cut down on the soaking time and everything like that. I enjoy the process of using just water and soap and scrubbing it. And then after I've cut them off of the runners and I'm getting them ready to go on alligator clips to paint them, I clean them one more time before they go on the alligator clips. It should also be noted that you do not want to get hand oils or touch your face and get face oils on your pieces. They will have the same effect that a mold release or debris and dirt will have on a paint job as well. Imagine if you had just a regular easel and it just had a bunch of oil on it and you were trying to paint a painting, it would not come out as good as if it were just a plain easel. Now, I want to stress again that your method is your method. You do it the way that you wanna do it. If you think it's stupid to do it on the runners, then by all means, go ahead, cut it off and do everything. I just think it makes a little bit more sense to have the durability of it being on the runner and being able to actually get into the crevices. The other part I do want to mention is there are some people out there who do not want to paint, but they do want to pan a line, which is a paint as well, um, or they want to put on plastic polish on it. I still believe that it is important to clean the pieces if you're only going to pan a line or put plastic polish on there. By the way, I love putting plastic polish on the kits that I don't end up painting. It really makes them pop. So I'll uh, put down in the description the one that I like the best. I use it on my wing and it's she's gorgeous she's gorgeous <laughs> now everyone has their own process if you guys have a different process please leave it down below i am always open to hearing different ways that people do this if they use just different methods i'm sure some people out there have like i don't know i don't know like a little water gun i don't know i want to know i want to know the creative weird ways that you clean your kit i just want the biggest message to be that you need to clean your parts before you prime them and paint them because they will react to the mold release, debris, and everything. And that's really the biggest reason. It's not something that a lot of people think about when you think about just painting these pieces and building these pieces. You don't think about your hand oils. You don't think about the mold release. You don't think about anything. You just know that they came out of a little plastic bag that you ripped open and you assume that they're clean, but they're not. Super simple. It doesn't need to be a hard concept. All I just want you to know is that you do have chemicals and mold release agents on your pieces that will interfere with your paint job in the future. And that's pretty much it. Honestly, I think it's kind of fun to like clean the pieces. I really like cleaning them on the runners because you can get the front and back really, really good so that you don't have any weird clipping on your seam lines or anything like that if mold release stays on it. And that's pretty much it guys. Please let me know down below what you guys think, uh, what I need to explain a bit more, because it just seems whenever I do a tutorial, one of my points gets lost somewhere. So if there's anything you guys wanna know, let me know. I will be more than happy to explain it to you. You can send me a private message on Instagram where I am most active, I will answer there. And yeah, thank you guys for watching and let me know what your processes are. I will see you tomorrow, bye. It washes the pieces unless it wants to get the hose again. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Whenever you guys see dishwashing detergent, like all you can think about is those sad little duckies with the oil all over them, right? Cause that's all I see. All I see is sad little baby duckies. You remember when the baby duckies with oil were actually on the front of a Dawn like dishwashing detergent? Those poor ducks.